Japanese American person in the US doing something to hurt our country. It was just fear stoked hysteria. And over the years, Douglas changed. For one thing, the camouflage netting intended to disguise the factory was removed. And it got bigger, helped by wars in Korea and later Vietnam. After sending home the Rosies, Douglas had a change of heart when the Korean War started and they asked us to come back. Several of the women I worked with returned and many stayed until they retired. I loved my years at Douglas. We found out that we could do things like build airplanes. It gave me confidence that's lasted my entire life. After we bought our house, I had my own toolbox. I still do. I even changed the keyboard on my laptop last week. <laughs> Just like the poster said, we can do it. In the 1990s, after the Cold War ended, the Navy closed its shipyard and the Roosevelt base in the harbor. After that, a fund was created to pay for historical preservation projects. It's administered by Long Beach Navy Memorial Heritage Association. They've supported many historical society projects over the years. Still, there aren't many people left who can remember the war. I don't want our stories and contributions to be forgotten. I want the kids who are growing up today to know about our low-tech war and the ways that it changed our city. War bonds helped us pay for the war. We hope that our stories have convinced you to help us pay for the Pearl Harbor Project and exhibit with your donations and sponsorships. This will allow everybody the opportunity to hear this story. Thank you so much for listening. Dr. Kay Briegel and Roxanne Patmore, and we are blessed to have such great talent on our board. Brilliant. Dr. Craig Hendricks was brilliant, and Lucy Daggett was talented as always. In the audience tonight, we have Dr. Raymond Kelso and Dr. Kelso was a child in Honolulu on that fateful day. 17. Can you raise your hand? So we... During the exhibition, we'll be putting on programs such as this one and many others throughout the 15 months. In order for us to do this, um, Projects like this are very, um, are very large endeavor for an organization of our size, and so we need your help to um, bring this, bring this project to fruition. The budget for the project is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. We've raised sixty-three thousand dollars to date, and have sixty-one thousand dollars left to raise. And we hope that tonight we'll make um, some steps forward towards raising that money. We have a good friend with us tonight, Rich Archibald, who's going to help us to do that. Rich, will you come up? Wow, what a crowd we have out there. You all have money. I can see it coming out of your ears. I've got to tell you a little bit about when I was uh, in World War II. You know, I'm not that old, but I'm sort of old enough to know during Pearl Harbor, I was three years old, 
And all I remember of World War II is watching some movies and reading the Chicago Tribune. But the one thing I remember sort of the most when I was like four, five, six years old is that famous expression, remember Pearl Harbor. And when I was that young, I had no idea what that meant. But obviously I do now. And it, it means so much to so many people. And this, I tell you, this, the, the show here by, by Craig and Lucy, we've got to give them another hand. I mean, they were, I couldn't believe that. Lucy, I mean, it's just fantastic. And the thing that comes through to me in just listening to that is that we do have to remember Pearl Harbor. And I'm thinking of my two daughters who have some idea what that meant. I'm thinking of all these millennials, you know, who are running around now during the presidential election with Bernie Sanders and Hillary, et cetera, and everything else. How much do they know about Pearl Harbor and what that meant to millions of people, not only in the United States, but all over, and all the lessons that we should have learned, the Japanese internment and all that, which was such a blot on our, on, our, uh, on our history. Hopefully we've learned from that. And so tonight, what I want to do and what Julie has asked me to do is, you know, we have this 75th uh, anniversary exhibit that's coming out on December 7th, obviously, this year. Well, that doesn't happen just by Julie and her great staff thinking about it. It's going to take some money to do that, right? So how many of you are willing to spend some money tonight? Right? No? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, come on. I don't want to hear those arguments or like that I use all the time. I donate my time or I, or I, I donate in kind. I've in kind. So it is going to cost a lot of money, and you heard what she said about the budget. And so, Julie, will you come up here? Because I'm going to need you to help me on explaining some of these things. We want to start off with $1,000 gifts that will, in effect, pay for different things that I'm going to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is the designing and the installation of displays in the gallery window. This, again, this, these things don't just happen because Julie kind of wants it to happen. She needs money for it. She needs money for salary. She needs money kind of for everything. And so I am going to ask before Julie says, Julie, what is, what is involved with, with uh, doing this? We have to design the exhibition, repaint the walls, Select every item, write text, install, install all these treasures that we've been collecting. And that takes money. So who will start with $1,000 that will pay for this? John Hancock. Give John a hand. All right, John. Thank you, John. Evan, too? Oh my God, Evan Browdy, too. I just want to say a, a word about John Hancock. He is such a contributor to this uh, community. I've known him for years. We were on the Long Beach Public Library Foundation board together. And I, I just think, John, a hand for you. Uh, thank you for contributing. You are always there when, when we need it. Now, this, this next item may sound a little prosaic to you, but this is to find paint for the walls. And when I first asked Julie about this, I said, aren't the walls already painted? I mean, you know. She said, yeah, but that's old paint and it's kind of dirty. Plus the main thing is the walls have holes in them from other exhibits from past years. So we need like a thousand dollars to used to buy paint and then to hire the people to do the painting. Right, 
Yes. Julie, is there anything to add to that? The staff has been patching up for the past three exhibits. So, who will give us $1,000 to help pay for that? Raise your hand higher, Mike. There's another man, Mike Walden. Thank you, Mike. We're going to put your name on that blue thing at the Long Beach State, the pyramid thing, and we're going to we're going to put your name on that. Thank you, thank you very much. Another hand for Mike. That is, I mean, he, he's another one who's always here. Now this next one, uh, this this is uh, close to my heart because it involves kind of newspaper sort of work, and that's to we need to print photographs. These are these oversized photographs. You see it, see it exhibits. These are bigger than 20 by 30 and they're just, they're big and that takes money and that's another thousand dollars. So who's willing to raise their hand for a thousand dollars for that? I see a hand way back there. Leo Vanderland. How about a hand for Leo? Thank you, Leo. Leo, just a, another great, uh, a great philanthropist. Thank you, Louis, Leo. And now the last one for a thousand dollars is to install the exhibition pieces. And I'm going to ask Julie to explain what are these uh, exhibition pieces, Julie? The oversized photographs. Um, we'll do maps. We'll do all kinds of didactic panels that tell about what happened at Pearl Harbor, about the people in Long Beach and what life was like here, and some of the stories, such as Admiral Kidd and others who were the everyday heroes and supported the war effort. Thank you. I tell you, that story of Admiral Kidd, I've lived here, what, 38 years, and I knew about Admiral Kidd Park. And I thought Admiral Kidd was like a, a pirate or something. <laughs> And it, it wasn't until a story that we did this year in the Press-Telegram about that park that this was a real person named Isaac Kidd and everybody knew him in Long Beach. He went around and made talks with the Navy and everything else. And not only that, then it turns out he was the, the commander on the USS Arizona and was killed trying to save his men. I mean. What a story that is. I mean, that's just fantastic. And we need to tell that story to as many people as we can. And so this exhibition is going to do that. So who, who, can, who can give us $1,000 for these exhibition pieces? Is there someone out there who can do that? Like Don Canavi. I see Don back there. <laughs> Hi, Don. <laughs> I see a hand. There's a hand. $5,000?